Welcome to the third part in the WCOM Basics Differential Equation Series. Uh, this video I'm going to show you how to solve equations of the form, of this form, uh, linear first order differential equations. So what we have going on is um, function in terms of x times the second derivative, of, or times the first derivative of y, plus a function in terms of x times y equals some function of x. And if you recall from last time, we know how to solve separable differential equations. But we do not yet know what to do if we encounter something with uh, dy, dx, y, and f of x all kind of mixed together. So we're going to massage this a little bit to see if we can uh, find a more friendly form of this equation. So I've divided everything by a naught of x because um, we're going to be focusing really on dy dx and so we're going to try and isolate that. And I've rewrote a rewrote I've rewritten a1 over a naught and f of x over a naught as p of x and q just as convention since they're both functions of x uh, they can be absorbed into one kind of uh, mother function of that, but it's just conventional in, in practice. That'll be uh, obvious when you want to do it. So you notice that this is still not a separable differential equation. We can get uh, dy dx on one side, um, but then we have this term with two uh, p of x and then a linear term of y and that's not going to help. So we're going to see if we can multiply throughout by something to force this to be a differential equation, a separable differential equation that we know how to solve. And we're going to call this uh, factor i. So again we have, or not again, this is the first time you've seen this, but we have something times dy dx plus something times px y plus something times q. And immediately when we see uh, something like when we see something like uh, something plus y prime plus something plus y times y, uh, we're going to think uh, we're doing some kind of product rule. So let's move in that direction. Um, for now, I'm just going to, going to ignore this right-hand side but, uh, and work on the left-hand side, but we'll get back to the whole equation. So, um, moving in that direction of the product rule, knowing that uh, that will probably help us get to where we need to be, we're going to have... Uh, we're to take the derivative of i times y and note that we get almost exactly what we have here on this left-hand side. The only difference is we need d, the uh, derivative of i to be equal to i times p of x. And what do we know that returns itself once to, uh, differentiated is um, e, e raised to some power. So let's try out a few things for e, uh, for i, to uh, plug in for i. So here we just have a simple chain rule. Uh, of course, we're, uh, our first guess is going to be that i equals e to the px, which uh, will return e to the px and then get the derivative of the inner function, which is px. But if you recall, we don't want this derivative to be in here, so we're going to put in an antiderivative 
to uh, eliminate that derivative we have here. So So this didn't work, so we have set we want to see if e to the integral of px with respect to x um, could work. And indeed that does work because this is our i and this is our p. So we have uh, the derivative of i with respect to x is equal to i times p, which is perfect. So now we're going to go back to our original um, equation and substitute what we know and see if that makes it easier to solve. So from what we just did with the chain rule and everything, we have the derivative with respect to x of i times y is equal to i times q of x. Um, this has not changed with anything we've done. And maybe I shouldn't have erased this, but it, maybe you're taking notes. I hope you are. And in which case, just look back a few notes and you can look, look back a few uh, lines and you can find the, uh, the logic behind that. And it works out very nicely because now we can integrate both sides with respect to x. The derivative and antiderivative are going to eliminate each other. And we're going to have this function in terms of x, and we're going to integrate that with respect to x. Um, so so we have solved for, oops, don't forget about your plus c's. Uh, so we have solved for our y in terms of x, and if you're given some initial condition, such as y prime at some time equals something and y at some time equals something, uh, then you can solve explicitly for c and have um, a particular equation. Um, so this is all very abstract. We're going to do an example kind of to uh, show you that it's really nothing to worry about. So here we have x dy dx e plus y equals sine of x. And this is nasty. It's got a sine. It has a derivative. It has, a, has its derivative multiplied by x. So we're just going to go through these steps, um, make it into something we can just integrate and solve that way. So what we have here is uh, I've divided throughout by x uh, on our integrating factor, which will take some memorization because uh, unless you want to go through the derivation of the integrating factor every time. But um, so our once we uh, have e to the integral of px with respect to x, uh, we're just going to get e to the ln of x, which is just x. And oftentimes, with just simple uh, equations like these, you'll find that there's a lot of similarity between uh, this term here, which was a naught x in, in our original thing, and the integrating factor. Not always, but um, really things work out nicely uh, when you do it this way. So, yeah, what have I done? It, uh, just recall that d dx of i times y equals i times q once we multiply throughout by, um, by i and notice the product rule. Uh, after a while, it will be very easy to uh, make, this, make this step, but for now you might want to kind of check your work and actually... Um, and actually take the derivative of this and 
see that it does indeed equal that uh, what we started out with once we multiply throughout by i. Um, of course, the x will, x's will cancel out, and we can integrate both sides with respect to x. And we will have x times y equals uh, negative cosine x plus c. Um, and dividing uh, both sides by x, we have y as a function of x um, equals negative cosine of x over x plus c over x. And here you see the importance of not forgetting your c, because the, uh, if we just had plus c, that's completely different because once you divide by something that's not constant, the constant cannot absorb that uh, cannot absorb that thing that you divide it by. Um, so, apart from getting an initial condition, which would be y at zero, you just plug in zero, solve for c. Um, as aside from doing that, that's pretty much all you need to. Uh, solve any linear first order differential equation. Uh, thank you for watching. Next video I'm going to give you an application of, of uh, these linear first order differential equations with mixing problems. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you can click the next video up here to jump to it. Also you'll find some links to our website where you can find our worldwide differential equations with linear algebra which has a lot more uh, examples and uh, maybe some, another viewpoint of things that will help you. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the playlist of this basics series. Of course, if you're on mobile, this can all be found in a card up in the corner. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.